Hi, um, my name is Joanna Hardman and I'm one of Wandsworth's uh, highly specialist speech and language therapists. And this webinar is about supporting your child um, in this important time just before they go into nursery. So I'm assuming that you're watching because you care for a child who's two, three. And um, it's helpful if we think about what is expected of a child this age. Now we know there's no such thing as a, a, an average child. Every child is unique. Every child has strengths and challenges. And um, so we're just gonna look at kind of full part figures about what people, what children should be doing at any one stage. And more importantly, how you can support them at this important time in their lives and an important time in your life. So I'm just gonna share my screen. And you'll see um, that, <clears throat> I'll just get the slideshow going. So you'll see this is the Ready for Nursery webinar and we're looking at it from a speech language and communication point of view. So the aims for the session are to develop an understanding of the importance of communication skills and how to support them. So there is really no more important thing than communication. It's the way that children are going to succeed at school. It's the way they're gonna make friends um, and have a you know, happy achieve, achieving life uh, ahead of them. And why I'm so passionate about working with the early years is that this is the time to really minimize any gap between one child and another. We want all children to be starting nursery or starting reception um, the, the best way they possibly can with the best developed communication skills that they can have. And the children that are two and three have had a pretty unusual life compared to previous uh, two and three year olds, because obviously we've had lockdown, which has meant that most children have had reduced opportunities to kind of be out and about and socialize with um, other children at play groups and things, and even um, face to face in the shops and think about how much time they've spent looking at people with masks as well. Um, so we're in this session, we're going to provide information about children's speech language and communication development at the age of three. And we're going to learn how to help your child transition into nursery. So a, a way of looking at what skills a child needs to develop is looking at this communication pyramid. And we're thinking about the first communication skill down at the bottom and the most difficult communication skill being the kind of icing on the cake right at the top. So for a moment, we'll just think about what are our kind of foundations uh, skills that a child needs to develop. And really looking and listening are key. Think about uh, a child who is looking and listening at an adult. They not only hear better, because research has shown if you're looking at something, it actually opens up um, some of the, our hearing tubes. Um, and they're also being supported by all the kind of nonverbal things an adult is doing. So can you get that coat over there and put it over here. So if you're using gestures, which we naturally do, if a child is looking and listening at you, they're much more likely to be attending, to be paying attention to it and to follow any extra clues that you're giving them. And above that comes play and interaction. And we know that children's work is play. And it's not just a pastime, it's really where they begin to see how the world works, what things can do and what things can't do. And they begin to see that one thing represents another. So when um, you give a one-year-old a big plastic doll, they're beginning to see that this represents the real baby that they know. 
But if you gave them a tiny Lego baby, they wouldn't appreciate that that was a symbol of a real baby. So they're still developing their symbolic understanding of the world. And don't forget that words are the absolute symbol of something. So when I say to you tree, it's just a representation of the big green things that grow in the garden. So we want children to play and develop their skills. And you'll see that it's not until children are really quite big that they can truly kind of put themselves into someone else's shoes and do proper role play. So when you're thinking about the under threes, you just want them to be um, kind of playing with big dolls, small world play if they can, and um, beginning to enjoy playing side by side with another child, but you wouldn't expect them to be playing what we call cooperatively with another child, with rule-based games, that comes much later. But anything you can do to support your child, taking some basic turns in a game, rolling a ball to each other, kicking a ball to each other, building a, a, a big pile of bricks with you going, they go, you go, they go, because all of that is about waiting, sharing, being aware of the other person. So they're all good things to play in advance of nursery. And then comes understanding. And we know that children hold on to a word for about six months when they understand it, but they're not yet using it themselves. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because you can say to quite a small child, where's the ball? And they'll toddle off and get the ball, but they're not saying it yet. So there's that gap between how much a child understands and how much they say. And above that is talking. How much is the child actually able to say? And we use it as a rule of thumb to say roughly, we expect one-year-olds to be saying some single words, two-year-olds to be putting two words together. So daddy's shoe, mummy's cookie, and three-year-olds should be putting three words together. And they still miss out little words. So daddy gone park rather than my daddy has gone to the park um, and that's fine but we really want to see that our emerging three-year-olds are making up some sentences of their own so they're not just repeating phrases they've heard never mind it's all gone um, but they're making up sentences themselves like that one about daddy gone park or whatever and then at the top of our tree or pyramid is the speech sounds. So how clear are the speech sounds? And again, at three, they've got lots of time to develop their speech sounds. You won't expect them all to be in place. But we say that three-year-old should be roughly understandable to someone who's familiar working with young children. So if everybody is asking you what they say, what are they saying, then maybe they need, they're beginning to need some support with their speech sounds. But generally, as long as they can be understood, um, probably their speech sounds are on their, on their way. And um, that's the thing that we kind of worry about least in the under threes. OK, we know that communication skills are important because it's vital to learn, make friends and feel confident. And poor language, we know, unfortunately, puts children at risk of poor reading and writing, poor behaviour and poor exam results and lack of success at school. So it's really key that we make sure this gap here is as narrow as possible and support them. So what should your three-year-old be doing? Well, there's usually a rapid increase between the ages of two and three with language. And um, this is just what I was saying just now, by three, most people should be able to understand them um, and they understand themselves more than they're actually saying. Now, going back to our pyramid, we remember that the first skill to develop is the attention and listening. And here we um, often expect too much of very young children. It's big. Um, it's a big thing for them to be able to sit and attend for any length of time. 
our two to three year olds prefer their own activities. They prefer to choose their own activity. And you can engage them sometimes in something that you'd like them to play with, but you'll find as soon as they've lost interest, they wriggle off and, and want to do their own thing. Um, they can't concentrate on two things at once. A much older child can be coloring and then you can be telling them what you're going to be doing tomorrow and they can hear it and carry on coloring, maybe even look up at you and then refocus themselves. This is not true for our very little ones at two to three. If you want them to follow what you're saying, you need to get them to stop what they're doing so that they can attend to you because they're very much at that kind of rigid attention stage. So then they're completely absorbed in something. So your words won't, won't mean much to them. They won't be taking them in. And that isn't a, a kind of um, uh, them being stubborn or naughty, nothing like that. It's just that they're almost programmed to focus in on something so that they can get the most out of it and cut out every other kind of um, distraction. So call their name before you tell them something important. And it's really important that they are turning to their name because it's a safety skill. You want to be, when you're out and about, taking them to nursery, you want them to respond to their name so that you can um, make sure that you alert them to danger and that sort of thing. So practice that and give them lots of praise if they're doing that and call their name and get them to stop what they're doing before you talk about something um, important. By three to four years, um, they are much more likely to play with friends and join in activities that someone else has cho chosen and they're more interested in what other people are doing and they will uh, respond quicker to instructions and refocusing. If any of you have been through any of our speech and language therapy clinics you'll know about special time and this isn't by any means to say that you're not playing and interacting an awful lot with your children, but special time is a little bit different. It's where you take five minutes a day, and that doesn't sound very much, but it is a lot when you're asking someone to turn the phone off, don't interact with other people during that time, try and make sure siblings are involved in something else. So you've got five minutes special time with this one child. So it lasts for five minutes only. The child should select the activity and the, or the toy or the game and try not to have a book because that's a bit directed. You want something that you can interact between um, the two of you. Sit where they can easily see you and make eye contact and give your child the undivided attention that they need. And focus on what they're saying rather than how they're saying it. So get that kind of back and forth conversation going. So avoid watching a TV or reading a book. Minimize distractions. Most of us have got big TVs in our homes and um, they can really distract children. If I was playing music now, you'd find it difficult to concentrate on what I'm saying, and then you might get distracted by a song you like. And children, it's harder still. So um, please, in special time, turn the TV off or the radio so it's quiet and they can really focus on the talking. And special time should just be with one child and you and sit face to face so that they can see their, your eyes and you can see their eyes. And that's really important because you can really see what they're looking at and what they're interested in at that particular moment. So I often give the story about when I um, took my little one to the zoo and I paid all that money to go in and she was interested in an ant walking across her new shoes and not the zoo animals. And actually you're better to give the, um, uh, the words about the ant going across the shoe rather than trying to direct them away. So you can see with their eyes what they're interested in. Then we've got play developing through this two to four years. So 
um, we want to begin to see children at two to three having very little sequences in their play. So can they bath a doll and then put her into a bed? Um, so it's sort of two things together. And that goes hand in hand with language because they won't be saying things like yesterday, I went to the park, but before I got there, I, I had a snack. Um, that would be far too complicated for these little children. And likewise, their play doesn't have that sequencing. So um, at two to three years, we just want to see it developing and you sitting with them, kind of supporting what their next stage could be is a really um, important thing to do. And then three to four years is when you begin to see them be using that pretend play. And that's an important part of their development because they're beginning to see what the world might be like to be in someone else's shoes. So with play, sometimes as adults, we get a bit enthusiastic and um, lead it too much, but try and follow your child's lead. Copy your child, that's really empowering. If they're banging bricks, you bang bricks and it'll really surprise them. And then you can talk about it. Show lots of interest. We've got very busy lives with phones and all sorts going on, but try and show interest, you know, in your child's play so that it kind of empowers them. Then we're going up to understanding in our pyramid. And at two to three years, they should be beginning to understand um, two to three keywords. So can you get your bag and your coat? And they're beginning to understand who, who at the apple, what, what's this, or where question, where's daddy? Um, by three to four years, they're understanding why questions, which are much more complicated. And still a lot of children won't be understanding the why questions at this age, because it's really, um, you're really thinking deep into a subject if you're asking why. So if you ask a child, you know, why did you bite so-and-so? Actually, what are you actually asking them? They're not likely to tell you, well, I'm a bit grumpy because I was teething last night and I didn't get much sleep. Of course, they're not able to say that. So you can ask them much more factual questions like who got hurt, where did they get hurt? But the why questions come later and many children don't get them until um, the end of reception age. Um, and they're beginning to understand longer instructions at this age. Then we've got expressive language, which is how much the child is actually saying. And we've spoken about the child at two to three using two to three words and at three to four using three or more words. How do we support children's expressive language? So the top tip, and we often, um, when we're around young children, fail to do this. It's very easy to fall in the trap of just asking little children lots of questions. What's this? What are you painting? Why are you putting the train under there? All of those kind of um, annoying questions that don't really need an answer because you either the child knows it, what color is this, blue, and you knew they knew blue, so whoopee, they've just told you an answer you knew they knew, or you've set them up to fail because they don't know the answer. So research has shown actually just commenting on children's play or their activities is better than asking them questions. So if your child is painting, don't say, what are you painting? Just say, that's so nice, lots of blue, and leave it at that. Um, so model what you would like them to say. Don't just question, question, question. Um, so turn those questions into comments rather than what are you doing when the child's at the, in the play corner, you say um, you're cooking dinner. And this way, the child is more likely to learn new words and new words, new ways to use those words in sentences. Now, here is uh, a, just a, a, a kind of look at what's happening with our speech sounds. And we know that's the thing at the top that we're not tending to be too worried about um, in the under threes. So if you look at the yellow bar across the top, they're the they're sounds that we would 
want our two and a half year olds to be making. So lots of per burs, ter, der, mer, ne, wer. And if you look at me, you can see me making those sounds and they're all made at the front of the mouth and they're the easier sounds to make. Then if you look at the green bar going down, those are the sounds that come by three and a half and they're slightly harder like the sir and her and g. And they're the sounds, some of them made further back in the mouth. And then by four and a half, you've got even harder sounds. So the shurs and churs and jurs and vers and spurs and stirs. So they're quite difficult. And some of the sounds like r might not be in place till a child is five and a half. But if you just think about our three-year-old, should, you should be able to understand what they're saying, even if it's not pronounced exactly as we would so if it's if a child is very difficult to understand then maybe seek a referral to speech and language therapy so how can I help my child be ready for nursery talk to them about first day worries let you know let your child know what's coming up by talking to them how many sleeps till it happens and talk to them about new nursery new teacher new friends and try not to show any anxiety yourself it's a big time for you too if your child's starting nursery um but it's uh, and they don't need to sort of hold your worries so try and keep your worries back um, we've got fantastic settings in Wandsworth. I'm sure they're going to be absolutely fine. Use photos from the nursery website or some photos provided by the nursery so that um, you can show your child pictures of where they're going to be and maybe have it up on the wall so it's a talking point. Borrow books from the library with positive stories about starting nursery or, or school. There are lots of lovely books around get uniform ready or particular clothes that they're gonna be wearing and practice trying on and talking to them about their school uniform. Um, just practice, uh, you know, a child being as independent as they can with their coats, that sort of thing. Name clothes as you put them on so that the child uh, gets it to hear those uh, clothing words. Here's your trousers, here's your t-shirt. Practice dressing up a favorite doll or teddy. And then getting ready for the journey so that the child knows. Uh, plan and practice the route you'll take when you walk or drive or ride to nursery. Talk about the journey and what you see. And you can even take photos. It's so easy now on a phone. So take photos of the journey so you can talk about it again and again before it happens. Talk about who will come with you, where you've been and what you'll see and get books out from the library if you're gonna start traveling by bus and they're not that used to it, that sort of thing, and talk about those. So final top tips for nursery starters are lots of specific praise naming good behavior. And specific praise means good waiting, good sitting, good listening. Um, so you're actually naming the good behavior. Just like we don't like to say you're a naughty boy because that means the whole of the child is naughty and there's pretty much you know, nowhere to go from there. You would actually say, you know, it was naughty to draw on the wall or something. Likewise, with good behavior to encourage it happening again, lots of naming that good behavior. So good waiting, good sharing with your sister, that sort of thing. Try and have a few play dates with other children so they can see those starting um, nursery with them. Encourage that turning to their name. Encourage the recognition of their written name, which will really help the nursery staff so that they know, um, you know which is their water bottle, that sort of thing. Attend any trial morning. That's really important for your child. Um, make sure you sound happy at nursery, play those turn-taking games, sharing and waiting is a, a really important skills. And while schools are still on before they break up for the summer, go and visit, go and stand outside um, in the morning if you don't have siblings that are uh, already at the school so the child hasn't been before, go and stand out one morning so you can see other children going in. And that's me done, really. So um, that's uh, this little talk on supporting your child um, 
ready for nursery. If you are worried about your child's communication, then um, please, if you've got a Wandsworth GP, you're very welcome to refer yourself. You don't need to go through the GP. Um, and if you look up Children's Therapies, St George's Hospital, um, you will see our referral details. So thank you for listening and the best of luck at this special time for you and your child.